whale that you get in there as well. Uh, they're biannual as well. You get spring, summer, autumn, and winter in the books as well. So we're not that far off. So this one would be the spring, summer edition that we're looking at now. Twenty-five pounds and ninety-five pence uh, on this already. Um, you get a lot in these kits for your money. You really do. So um, in the kits, of course, uh, as you've mentioned, you've got tons and tons of patterns. Um, you have. There's actually one in there by myself. The oh. camera bag at the front there. Um, this one. Yeah, I made that camera bag. That's designed by me. Um, you get the yarn, of course, to make the whale. The yarn is gorgeous. So you get this lovely uh, Shapier Skies yarn, which is um, it's it's been very much influenced by by the weather and the sky. So deep, dark blues and greys, um, and it's a very similar technique to the to the crochet kits that we've shown earlier. So it's quite simple. Um, the yarn is gorgeous. You get the Skies yarn as well as the Katona yarn, which is a mercerized cotton, so slight shine to the cotton. Uh, you are really being spoilt, is what I could say with this, to be honest. Uh, you get everything that you need, and you're getting projects as well. Uh, maybe it's going to be a nice little place to start uh, for someone, uh, because then they've got the other kits. All they need to do then is go for some of the boxes, and then they can start creating as well, because you've already got your patterns in there. 921546 is your item number. Then, all of this that you see here, including the pattern as well, will create this. It is absolutely beautiful and massive. It's, it's absolutely huge. <laughs> <laughs> it really is big. So, um, in the kit there, you get the Colour Crafter, which is an acrylic yarn. Um, so, it really holds its colour. It's lovely to work with. It's wow. fairly thick um, in comparison to the teeny tiny uh, crochet yarn that we've shown for the, the toys. So the blanket does work up quite fast and you get all the yarn to make this gorgeous blanket, very colourful. And it's, you know, it's, it would look lovely on a bed, you know, a double bed. It's, it's very large. It is, it is huge. It, or even if you've got the single bed, you're going to get that drape over yeah. the sides as well yeah. if you want to go for that drape. Uh, very busy uh, for this. It's about £25 across two flexible payments. But you know what that means? Once you've got the red box, it opens up flexible payments. So anything else that you now pop in will be split onto two interest-free flexible payments as well. Just look at the amount of yarn. But something else that you're, you're really shopping ahead of me, which I absolutely adore, is the studio pack that we've also got on yes. the show as well. Uh, now, I've never seen this, so tell, talk me around it. All right, so the studio pack, um, I'm sat here rather keen. It is a firm favourite of mine. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I own one of these myself. The second they were released, I went out and bought one. So the studio pack, it's pretty amazing. You get this, um, this, this board, which is magnetic. You also get a smaller version of the board, also magnetic. So perfect for just having on your lap. Now the studio pack, the name says it, it's, it's for your own kind of studio, potentially designing. But don't be put off by the name studio. You can also take it to your sofa and create your own studio. So you get the board, the large one, the small one. You get a pack of Katona with nice. all of these gorgeous, gorgeous colours. Um, so it's 109 different colours of these little cute balls. And you get the tin here to put all of your goods. So I put my crochet hooks, my, my darning needles, my stitch markers in there. And within that, you get, let me show you, you get magnets and they can just go onto your your board there so if you're doing like a mood board or something or you want to store your ribbon or your patterns you can click them onto your board and then you also get these sample shade cards um, which are fantastic you also get magnets you can peel the back of the magnets off pop on the shade cards and then stick them on your board so if you're trying to come up with a design or a pattern um, and you're not sure on colors you can go ahead and do that and I'll show you really quick what I like to do. I actually like to pop the magnet on the back, just like so, so it's good to go. And then I get a pair of scissors. I'm not ruining the product, I, pr I promise you. I take a pair of scissors to it, and I actually chop the, uh, the individual colors off so that oh. I can then mix and match the colors that I have. So I've actually done that to a few of them already. So say I'm playing around with some pinks or some gorgeous kind of purple colours. I can figure out what colours go. Maybe I'm going to go a bit earthy. There we go. I'm going to go with those colours. 
We'll put those off to the side. And we are creating a gorgeous little mood board. Look at that. So if you've not got a craft room, if you've not got that space that you can lose yourself in in your home, you think, well, that's the dining table, Adam, nine times out of ten. This is the way to go. Because your craft room will go wherever you want it to go. The garden. That gazebo at the end of the garden that you're only using in the summer. But then you have to lug everything from the spare room all the way outside when you want to use it. With this, you take your board with you. Now, what I want you to do is don't buy this. £59.99 with £20 off. Don't buy it. Take, well, let's take that £20 off because I'm going to give you more value for money. And I'll make this board even better. So you've already got £20 saving. Then I'll give you another £20 saving on top already. And then I will also add in yarn as well. A pattern for a sofa runner with the yarn included as well for two flexible payments of £45. Which means your boards, we worked this out earlier, didn't we? Like, how much did we work out the boards would be now? I can't remember. It's a massive saving that you've got. So you've got 20, basically, yeah. Basically, you've got 20 quid off the board in the island. That's a, that is ridiculous value for it money. It is such good value for money. Um, not only do you get all of these great products, you get the pattern to make this gorgeous, gorgeous table runner. I mean, it could be whatever you want, actually. Sofa runner, table runner, blanket for the bed. But you get the Katona yarn, so the gorgeous kind of grey, along with um, the white to border it. You get the pattern all of the yarn and the, the studio pack boards, tins, magnets. Um, so you've really got a lot going on there. Um, your friends will be jealous. <laughs> they, they really, really will because you have got so many things. And let's be, let's be savvy shoppers. If you're thinking, that's all well and good, Adam. I like the boards, but a sofa runner, not really my thing. Don't worry. Do not worry about it. Go for one of the books. You've got the yarn. You've got all the yarn there. Then whatever else you want to go for, maybe you're going for one of the pa these packs as well, you're going to get the pan for the snakes. So then you can make an abundance of snakes and start selling them. There's nothing stopping you. This is what you can do. Think savvy shopping if you're thinking that's all well and good. Remember, it's only a pattern and yarn. But you can create that sofa runner if you wish. If you think a sofa runner is not for you, you've got all that yarn to use. Right then, let's see how easy all this is. It's all right talking. Let's, let's put words into action. Ryan, Matt, what are we looking Let at first? Me, so what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to show you, in particular you, okay. right, how to start off with your toys, how to crochet. I'm there. I'm with um, you. I'll show you th that, and then I'm going to jump ahead and show you some of the ending stuff. Um, basically, so you can all understand just how easy these kits are, and you can all give it a go. Could you now, just move that tin slightly to the left? just so we can get I the certainly fabulous. can. Just like this? So Beautiful. Thank you. How's that? Beautiful. Brilliant. Um, so I'm just using one of the, the mini balls of Katona right here. So gorgeous mercerized cotton. This um, comes in the Katona Studio Pack set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to start off an Amagurumi toy. So I'm just taking my, my hook there. I'm using quite a small hook, so I hope you guys can see. It's a 2.5 millimeter hook, which is perfect um, not to get little holes into your, your toys because you don't want the stuffing popping out and stuff like that. So we're going to do something here. This is called a magic loop. It's magic. It's fabulous. It's great. So a magic loop, um, you start by popping the, the yarn over your two fingers. Wrap the yarn around so it's crossing over your fingers there. Then I'm going to flip my grip, grab my crochet hook, and pull the yarn under, just like so. All right, so there's a little loop that we've pulled through. Then I'm going to put my crochet hook through that very slowly and carefully pull the, the loop that we had around our fingers off and then I take hold of my yarn ready to crochet. Now to crochet this is the really easy part and I'll, I'll show you how to get going and why this is called a magic loop as well. So crochet you simply pop the hook under the yarn and you pull the yarn through the loop that is on the hook. That's a stitch. Ah. Easy peasy. Right, so that is, it's, it's really simple. It, does, it takes a little moment to, the hardest thing I'd say is learning how to hold your hook and tension the yarn. So see how that can be all slack and loose, but I have to 
hold it tense and tight and taut. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do a, a double crochet, a, a UK double crochet. Now, the reason it's called a double crochet is you're putting your yarn through the center of the magic loop, pulling the yarn back through, and we've got two little loops on the hook, which make it the, the double. Then you're going to pull the yarn through both loops. That's a double crochet. It is quite, once you get the, once you, I think the tricky bit is just starting off. It is just starting off. So I've just done one double crochet. We're going to go ahead and do six. I'll show you how easy that is. So the, the hook goes through the center of the magic ring. You pull it back through, two loops uh, on the hook. Hook the yarn and pull it through both loops there. So that's another double crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and just do four more of those. Okay. And you can see that once you know what you're doing, it becomes kind of seamless and you get like a, a flow to it and you can easily pop the TV on, just crochet, do your thing. You don't need to pay too much attention um, when you're just doing the same stitch over. Of course, you want to pay attention to your pattern, but um, you can just, you can watch TV and enjoy, enjoy what's on the box. So I've done six double crochets and this is why um, this starting loop is called a magic loop or a magic ring. We pull the tail end and it gets smaller and tighter, smaller and tighter, and then it gathers and it creates this very seamless starting point, right? So that will be the starting point to all of your toys, all of your amigurumi toys. And then all you do with the amigurumi method is you keep on crocheting round and round in a circle. Now, the thing with a, a flat crochet circle is of course we can't just keep doing stitches because what will happen is we'll make a, a sausage shape we need to keep increasing the stitches so it lays flat. So for the second round, I'm gonna do a series of increases. And an increase, it's not scary at all, is simply doing a double crochet twice in the same stitch. Okay. Yeah? yeah? So just let that sink in a little bit. It's just one stitch in the same repeated hole. in the same hole. Look at that, got it. I'm there, got I it. am, move over Catherine. That's amazing, move I'm over Catherine. Through. He's coming through. So let me show you um, how to do an increase. So in case you don't know what the stitches, um, where the stitches are and what they look like, you can see just here that we've got two kind of little bars. Now that's the stitch. The stitches sit like little V's. Do you see the V's? Oh, yeah. Just moving around. So each of those V's is a stitch. I've got my uh, caffeine shake going on had too much coffee today. So I'm um, inserting my hook through the stitch. You can see the V is just above my hook there. I'm pulling the yarn through, two loops on the hook, and pull the yarn through both loops. That's a double crochet. I'm going to go into that same V, pull the yarn through, two loops on the hook, double crochet. So that's an increase because we've done two stitches into that one stitch from the previous round. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. So we simply just repeat that going around. Double crochet, another double crochet into that same stitch. And before you know it, we have completed the second round to our toy. Now this yarn is actually in the same colour as the, the dinosaur in the, in the little pack that you can buy. Oh yeah. So I've basically started off the dinosaur. Um, there we go. So that's the second round. You can see as well the magic loop has opened a little bit. All you need to do there is pull that centre yarn nice and tight and it's closed. And then you just keep going round. You keep on going, yep, round and round and round. So gradually, if you've spent a bit of time on that, you end up, end up with something like this, which is um, something I've just done in a bit of white cotton. But that's a circle and that's actually the top of the head for the dinosaur. Now, if I was going to carry on with the dinosaur, all that's done, it's not as tricky as a dinosaur looks. You've got a head that then uh, separates into a neck. All we're going to do is, the pattern will tell you how many stitches, but you would simply skip some stitches, fold your piece over, and crochet into, oops, I've lost my yarn. That's brilliant. Skip some stitches and crochet into a stitch on the other side. And what we do, I'm just doing double crochets, the ones that I've shown you. 
what we've done here is we folded a circle in half and we've created a space for a head ah. and a space for a neck. And I would keep on crocheting round and round here and that would create the neck. And then I'd join the yarn and I'd do the kind of face area. So this little bit here is actually the top of the head of the dinosaur. So it's very easy just to split the, the space. It is really, really easy to do. Uh, you see, once you get the knack, now I know what you're sitting at home, you're going, oh, of course you're going to say it's easy to do, you work on shopping telly. I know, but it is. So you make, the ma you make your magic loop first, which we showed how to do, and then remember, you can watch that back. So there's no even going to the YouTubes or the Facebooks. You can watch that back on Rewind and stop it and pause it, rewind it, stop it, pause it, rewind it, so you get it right. And then we've just learned how to increase the stitches as well, which you can also watch back on the Rewind. And you're also getting the patterns and everything that you need. In one way, it's a given, to be honest. The only thing that you need to add is a set of hooks and you are good to go. This is a craft that you can pick up and put down whenever you want. You really, really can. Now, the snake here is flying out of the door. Uh, it's not called the snake kit at all, because what you're actually getting is you're getting the pattern uh, to make said snake. You can get the pattern and you're getting enough yarn uh, to make two of these as well. But what are you actually colorways that you're actually getting? Well, there are well, three for five to choose from that you're looking at here. We have your pastels that you've got. Beautiful, beautiful, soft colours. Uh, it reminds me sort of quite Easter-esque, like little chicks I can see out of this and little baskets and little, little nests. Uh, then you've got your jewels, quite sumptuous colours that you've got in there. Absolutely beautiful. Remember, enough in each box to make two of the snakes. Uh, then you've got your rich down the bottom down here. So these are your rich colours. So your terracottas are in there, your fuchsia pinks, uh, your turquoises, your greens, your purples, sumptuous colours. Uh, then we've got your clouds. So we're now talking blues, greys, soft ocean colours uh, that would really work well in sort of like your blue rooms. As it, Obviously, of course it would because it's blue, Adam. Uh, then <laughs> I went off on a tangent and I couldn't pull it back. Uh, then your rainbow is now limited stock. Limited stock for your rainbow set, £14.99. You also get the pattern uh, to make two of the snakes in there as well. But if you want the rainbow, I would get in quick if I was you, because it is about to go. £14.99, 031297 is your item number. And then um, you've also got... Uh, the book as well that we're going to just quickly show you the details for. Uh, all of this for a, a sumptuous price. It's a cracking little deal for not £29.99. You, know, you get so much in this. You get that much, you can create your own shawl and other projects that are also in the kit as well. Uh, but you get them in the book, but obviously it's down to you what you want to use them for. I think a crank needle tie, £29 and £99, a nice little giftable uh, for someone maybe that wants to start in the world. Uh, 751175 is right. We've got some lovely emails I'm hearing. Linda's saying she crochets till one in the morning. One more row, one more row, and she's still sitting there at one o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's Linda, I'm the same. I'm the same, I can't put my hook down. <laughs> would, I, I suppose it is a case of once you get going, you like, actually, I'll just do, I'll just do that little bit more because it won't take me long. Exactly that. It is really hard to pop down. <laughs> uh, then we've got another email, Christina. Thank you for your email. Uh, she'd wish she'd seen that demo years ago. Should have come to me, love, to be honest. She should have come to me. I, I only get the best. I only get the best. Um, she said, mm. crochet perfect made it look so easy, but it is. It doesn't make it look easy. Well, you are. You are a master at what you do. I, you, you're very talented. Well, right? you are. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> you are very talented at what you do, but it is as easy as that. It's a simple case of just sitting down and starting. There's many videos out there, but why go and search the website when we can do it here for you? If you've got anything that you want to ask a question for, studio to channel.com. Uh, put your emails in. We've got about 20 minutes to go. I'll see if I can get your emails out there. Uh, right, what else would you like to show me? Well, uh, do you know what? I'd really like to quickly just talk about the Whirl, which is one of my absolute favourite yarns. Um, it's a gorgeous cotton acrylic um, blend. Um, it comes in this lovely cake, yarn cake there. Um, and it works through this kind of ombre colour. I'm a big, big fan of this, um, especially this colour. Fuchsia's probably my favourite colour ever. And this works through the whole kind of fuchsia colourway. Um, and you've got 
in one of these cakes enough yarn there to make the whole of that gorgeous shawl that you've shown. Um, so big, big fan there of the uh, yarn cakes and also the yarn bookazine it comes with. So just wanted to show that. Let me give you another demo. Yes, How about please, that? please, please, please. So this one, um, it's kind of continuing on from where we just left off. Um, but I'm showing you a little section of the uh, snake. Okay. Okay. So the snake, if I just lift him over here so we can see from above, is actually worked in the same kind of um, way as the round and round in circles amigurumi. So we're just doing a double crochet, except for it doesn't work round in circles. It works back and forth in rows. So you're doing a flat bit of crochet, you're doing another bit of flat stripy crochet and you're joining them together by doing double crochets okay? okay so i hope i didn't lose you there no 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 we're there but so the double crochets when working in rows so i've already started here now i'm not actually doing any pattern really i'm just sh showing you how to do it um, so you just work along the row by inserting the yarn again through the stitch so you've got the v on top pull the yarn through, two loops on the hook, and you pull through. So that's a double crochet as we've already seen. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and speed along till the end of the row. And you can see that you do get like a bit of a flow going, which is always lovely. And it does become quite kind of um, calming actually. I personally find that at least anyway. Maybe not everyone, some people might find it stressful. I suppose once, you, when, once you're first starting, I, I think you may say, well, I don't find this very calming. But once yeah. you get into it, exactly. but it's as you said at the start, have a little practice first. Don't go straight in with your kit. Yeah. Have a little practice. The worst that you can have, you just unpick it and you start again. The great thing with crochet, if you've gone and messed up, okay, so we'll pretend that I've gone and messed up there, I simply just pull it out, start again. Okay. So you've got your loop there, that you just pop your hook back into and you're good to carry on. All right, so we'll pretend I didn't pull that out and I've just got to the end of a row. What I'm gonna show you, I've gone and messed up because I pulled out now, didn't I? Um, so I've got to the end of the row, I've just got one last stitch to do. And then, because we're not going round and round in a circle, I'm gonna chain one. A chain is simply grabbing the yarn and pulling it through the loop that's on the hook, that's a chain. I'm going to turn my work, work and, go back. and then go back. So it is really that simple. And we're creating a long, flat piece of material, exactly what's needed for the snake. Would you like to see some embroidery on the snake? Have I got yes, time for that? Yes, oh, yeah? I would. Lovely. So let me show you. You can see with the snake that we've got this gorgeous kind of um, embroidery going along the top. It looks tricky. It looks like it's part of a tricky, intricate pattern, but it is actually very simple. All you're going to do from, for that is take your darning needle and you can take a nice big darning needle. It's always nice when you can use a big needle rather than a fiddly little one. Just going to do that. So we're going to thread our darning needle. Just like so. And to make these little um, kind of crosses, we're simply going through the crochet, like so, going up to the next, well it's actually the second row away, and going through the crochet, just like so. We go down on the diagonal, and then up on the diagonal. And you can see we're making these little crosses. It's nice. really that simple. Um, you literally just continue like that. You just pattern. continue. Yep, you follow the pattern that the, that the, the pattern um, says. So in this case, we've got little diamonds. Um, it's that simple. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I absolutely adore it. I think you are as well. Um, fascinating, isn't it? It's just a standard watch. You're like, whiz through it. Uh, the rainbow option has now sold out. Uh, we're trying to get more. There might be more back this afternoon, um, but we've still got uh, your pastel uh, that you've got here. So we've got your beautiful pastel. Uh, then, so that's your pastel option. Uh, then we've got your jewel option as well. 
Uh, then at the bottom, you've got your uh, you've got your rich. And then you've got your clouds as well. Hopefully this afternoon we will have the rainbow back. I can't hold any promises though. Uh, we are we are trying. Uh, something else that's really really busy is the whale as well. You're absolutely loving the whale. Car. Obviously uh, you're getting the book in there as well. Not only just with one pattern in, it's got several patterns in. They're nice little handy little books to have if you ever want to refresh or you want to go back. You think, why did I do that again? It's all there for you. Not only are you getting the book though, you're also getting all the yarn to create the beautiful beautiful whale uh, that you see here at the moment. How beautiful is that? Absolutely stunning. Uh, the detail that you've got on there. And as we said at the start of the show, it's a beginner's project. You can be creating things like this at home. I know, it's hard to believe. I'm with you on this one. I really, really am. Uh, but we've seen how easy it is. We've squashed that myth already to say, it's a simple technique, and once you've learned the technique, you are good to go. You just adapt it depending on what you are doing. Uh, something else that's very busy as well is the large bundle uh, that we have here. Um, I think we've mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it again. Is it a case of the, the, the thickness of the yarn? Because when I started to know, when I learned to knit, it was a case of I was always told, use thicker yarn because you'll see your project come together a lot quicker and you get more reassurance that way. Sure. I mean, that, that certainly is a ca uh, case that if you use thicker yarn, it's going to grow quicker. Um, so, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, thicker yarn is great for blankets and stuff, though, as well, because what you get with the thicker yarn, if you use the correct hook size that goes with the thicker yarn, you'll get a lovely kind of gr uh, drape to it as well. Um, it is apps. This is one of the biggest blankets. I've Look how huge this is. You get all the wool to make this as well. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, you are, here we go, I mean Nancy moment. Pop it on, pop it on. Oh, look at that though. Oh, look like Alex. You look um, fabulous. Oh, <laughs> I feel like the next doc, I feel like Joseph in his technical <laughs> dream coat. Uh, but it is, Joseph, uh, and it's really nice wool It's well. gorgeous wool. Um, it's really soft. I, I do have to say without, without um, bad mouthing oh, acrylic no, yarn, do it. acrylic yarn sometimes can have a bit of a, um, I don't know, a bit of a, a negative connotation. This acrylic yarn is the softest it really is. acrylic yarn I've That's ever, ever met. Um, it's not squeaky. Those of you that crochet will know what I mean by squeaky. So when you hook, it doesn't squeak on the hooks. It's really soft. It feels totally natural and the color does not fade. It is a beautiful, even like a little poncho. How beautiful is it? Just as a little, little blanket around the house. You've got that nice bit of weight to it as well that you want from a blanket. You don't want a flimsy blanket. You want that bit of weight to know, yes, I've got a blanket on. Yes, I'm toasty warm and I'm going to sit here and make my beautiful little creatures and characters. Uh, you get all the yarn that you need in this bundle and including the pattern as well. Now let's just touch on the patterns why we're here because this is I think sometimes where we all go awry and obviously I learned it from Catherine because uh, Catherine told me about it. The patterns you can get them in two different so-called languages. Yeah. You get them in United States, you get American and we get English. What patterns are we looking at here? Um, the majority of these will be in English crochet terms. So for example the double crochet that I demonstrated is English terms. In American terms, that would be a single crochet. Okay. Um, but I actually think UK terms are slightly easier because the name Gives tells away. you what it is. So if you do a treble crochet, there'd be three loops on the hook as opposed to a double with two. You can find out um, uh, it, there is conversions. Oh, I'm leaving this yes. blanket on, by the way, in case you've just tuned in. It's blanket. Uh, but uh, I love it. Uh, but there is the through there as well. Uh, can you talk us through? We've had some emails in. Can you talk us through the studio pack? Uh, I again, certainly can. That we've got because uh, we've got a cracking little deal. I it? certainly can. So the studio pack, as mentioned, spins. <laughs> the studio pack, as mentioned, is one of my absolute favourite things. I own one of these. What you get is a gorgeous board, which would be fantastic mounted on a wall if you've got that kind of space. If not, it's great to pop just off to the side behind your washing machine or whatever when you're not using it and when you do want to use it, pull it out. So it's a gorgeous big board that is magnetic. So you can stick all, the, uh, you can stick all of these little clippies to it um, and they'll stick, lovely. Then you've got this smaller board that I'm holding. This one I personally find is, is really fantastic um, to use as like a lap board. Um, so what I mean by that is if you're sat on your sofa and you've got some ideas for kind of 
colorways and stuff like that. You can pop it on your, on your lap and just figure out what you're doing there. You can also, if you've got a pattern that you don't want to lose, you can also clip your pattern book oh, to idea. it like so. And you've got it all with you. It's perfect just to pop your hooks on there. It's a little kind of project board. So I absolutely adore that. So you get the two boards, the big and the small. You then also get the Katona color pack. So there's 109 mini balls in there and they are absolutely stunning. These teeny tiny balls, um, you could make so many different things with all of these little balls of yarn. Um, so I personally like to make lots of little toys with color changes, but you could easily make a sh like a scarf, a shawl, a blanket, or of course, something like this gorgeous runner. Um, also in the studio pack, you get the tin, which comes with your, your clip-on magnets, as well as the uh, strip magnets. And the strip magnets go on the back of the shade cards. Um, you can pull off the little uh, adhesive sticker, stick them on the back of the, the sample cards there. And you can even chop up the sample cards, as I've done, so that you can play around with the color. So you get all of that in the studio pack. And then if you are going for the, the larger option, you also get the extra yarn. So this gray yarn and the kind of creamy um, yarn to make this gorgeous, gorgeous runner. Of course, with the pattern as well. It is absolute as well. Mess around with pack shots there. Uh, it is. It is a discount because you're getting twenty pound off the studio pack already. Then I'm going to give you another twenty pounds off with the bundle with the yarn in with the runner as well. So in theory. The, the runner, yarn and patterns for £30 is what you're actually getting. I know, it's a phenomenal... I don't know who comes up uh, with these deals, but it, they've not... Well, obviously they've not been thinking. They've not got a calculator or the batteries are running out, to be honest. Uh, so, get it while you can. Because don't just think... Um, don't just think crochet when you see these project boards. These could be for your die cuts. These could be for the bits that you, you don't want to lose. That card making, that, that, that idea that you want to go and then you think, well, that's what I'm doing. Or you're making invitations or anything like that, and you think, well, that's, what, that's my goal. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe it's going to be your mood board uh, for the year. Right then, yarn bowls uh, is what we've got talking about here. Uh, first one is, these are absolutely beautiful. This is teak wood that we're looking at here, £44.95. Um, it sounds a silly question. What, what, what are they? Um, so, they're like cereal bowls. Yeah, they're nice. They are not it's cereal bowls. Oh, <laughs> no. they, are they are, so basically, they are a bowl to pop your ball of yarn in. Yes. And then, um, am I allowed to grab one, or is that against uh, COVID regulations? Um, no, we'll have to... Matt, All right, I'll, I'll just talk about hour. it. We'll I'll talk about it. Hour. Brilliant, Two yeah. Um, so, you've got the yarn bowl. You pop your wool into the yarn bowl, and the ball will roll around in the bowl, rather than being on the floor collecting kind of hair from your animals and all that kind of thing. Um, so the yarn bowl keeps your, your ball of yarn in one place and it just gently unravels. Oh, now, if you grab yourself exactly a ball of yarn like that, Let me try there's an easy start and you can put the, the yarn into the bowl and you can thread the yarn through that <gasps> gorgeous groove. Oh, so now exactly. it's not going to go anywhere, but yeah. I don't care how much I pull out there. Uh, but you know it's save it falling off the sofa and then it rolls around yeah. for days and you're looking one of, for... One of the things that I've really learned actually since, since COVID happened and I've grown my locks out <laughs> is I'm molting hair. And when I'm crocheting, my hair's like... I see it in my project. Because my, like, balls are... My balls? My ball of yarn are rolling around the floor and stuff. And um, so <laughs> I like to put my ball of yarn into the yarn bowl, keeps it hair-free, also free from animal fur, all sorts. Um, almost slipped up there, didn't I, with my You did wording. very well. <laughs> you did very well to cover it, he said, wrapped in a blanket. Now, the middle one, look at this one. This is the unbreakable, so they say, uh, this is the unbreakable uh, yarn bowl. £31.99 is what you're looking at uh, for this one as well. Pop your yarn balls inside. It's going to keep them rolling around. Stop them rolling off the table. Uh, stop them rolling under the 
the sofa. Uh, you know, and then you, when you stand up because the door goes or the phone goes, you've got your blanket wrapped around you, you've got your yarn balls on one side, you've got your pick and mix on the other. There you are, chocolate digestives all down the front here. Uh, it all goes everywhere. But this, you know, it's going, and then you've got the rosewood, which is once again absolutely beautiful. And um, nice little gifts that you know crochets or knits, but also nice just to have out. Also have one of these. I'm very lucky in that sense, um, and I, I love it on the shelf. It yeah, sits it on the nice. shelf as a kind of ornamental bowl. It's gorgeous. Right, and we are coming back to you. We've only got four minutes left of the show. Four minutes. Uh, what would you like to show me? Well, I'm going to show you Aww. another um, crochet technique. Very simple. This um, is just another stitch because I just want to show you how easy it is. So as as you were showing the gorgeous projects, I was crocheting away. I've made another magic loop. Just going to pull that tight. Now I'm going to show you how to make a half treble crochet. Sounds tricky. It is not tricky at all. Easy, easy, easy. All right, so to do this, what we need to do is we need to do a series of chain stitches just to build up because crochet stitches always work down into the work. So if you don't build up, they end up being all squished. So I'm going to do one chain going to do two chains and then I'm going to do a half treble crochet. So very simply, yarn goes over the hook, so that's different to the double crochet. Yarn over the hook, pop the hook through the stitch and pull the yarn back through. Okay, now we've got three loops on the hook. Yarn gets caught by the hook and we pull it through all three loops. That's a half treble crochet. I'm going to show you again, yarn over, insert through the stitch, so there's the V there, pull the yarn back through, grab the yarn and pull it through all three loops. That's a half treble. So very easy. I think I've got time. I'll show you one more stitch. This is a treble crochet. So yarn over that starts the same as the half treble. Insert the hook through the stitch and pull it through. This time we're going to go and grab the yarn, pull through two loops, grab the yarn, pull through two loops. So that's an even taller stitch than the stitch before. You can see it's slightly longer there. I'll show you that one more time. Yarn over, the hook goes through the stitch and you pull the yarn through. Then we go yarn over the hook again, pull through two loops on the hook, pull through two loops on the hook. That's a treble crochet. So today we've learned a magic loop, we've learned a double crochet, a half treble crochet, and a treble crochet. All in an hour, and all in the hour that you can rewind and watch again, time and time again, uh, for the next 60 days. Uh, and you're back at two o'clock as well. What are you showing us at two? At two o'clock, I'm gonna show you some color work, so the, the well pattern. Yes, nice. So I'm gonna show you how to change color, stuff like that. I've also got a really cool technique to really finish off your projects in a nice, neat way, so I'm gonna show you that as well. You see everything you need to know and more. Yes, I've been told to take my blanket off. Uh, 14 pounds and 99 pence for your little, your little dinosaurs that you get here as well. Once again, we've now learnt how to start, where to start, and if you look in more detail on all of these now, you can see where it all starts off, where them circles start and finish, and where you attach things. Once you break it down, it's not as daunting as it first seems is it let's be fair everything is in the kit for you as well uh, you can shop ahead of me on the website as well there's lots of other things on the website for you uh, you've got things like uh, little koala bears the dragon the otter you've got knitting on there uh, we've got the packs as well uh, the snake uh, pack we're going to try and get that rainbow back if we can for two o'clock but we've got pastel jewel uh, cloud and we've also got the rich uh, still available on there 14 pounds 99 pence and you get enough also, sneakily, on the end, a little sneaky seven-day saver that we've got. We've got some T-shirt yarn. Could you use T-shirt yarn? You certainly could. So T-shirt yarn is nice and thick, um, so it would work up really quick. It would be great for things like making things like baskets, um, things that you want to be a bit sturdy. Um, so you will often see these kind of baskets in shops and stuff um, that are often crocheted. You could crochet them yourself. You can crochet them yourself. Ten pounds and ninety-nine pence. We've only got thirty seconds left. Yes, ten ninety-nine for two balls. Well, I never. Uh, and they're recycled cotton as well. Uh, thank you, Matt. It's been an absolute pleasure.
this hour. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've had it. a lot of fun. It's been Bless brilliant. You. <laughs> uh, Bless you indeed. Uh, it is a cracking little thing that I think I may start partaking in. I think this might be, maybe not this week, a little bit busy, but uh, let me get through this week. Uh, maybe the start of next week and I'll put, start putting stuff on social media. Why don't we all do it together? I know. Let's do it. Uh, I'll see you in an hour's time. Yes, indeed, I will. See you in an hour's time for Graphic 45. Coming up next, though, Handmade by Hayley, one day special that you do not want to miss. Hi, I'm Lou from Studio Light. Studio Light has been around for about 40 years now. They're based in the Netherlands. It's a family-run business with a great heritage. The products that Studio Light bring us are very diverse, fantastic dyes, great papers, but all round on trend. Over the 40 years, Studio Light have evolved. They listen to me, the demonstrator, and you, the customers, and really take our ideas on board. On the Echander Shows, we'll share with you the diverse techniques and products will inspire you to produce your own individual pieces of artwork. So make sure you don't miss the Studio Light Shows on Echander. Exciting news! For the fifth year in a row, Hochanda has been awarded the top accolade of Platinum Trusted Service Award from FIFO. These awards recognise businesses that deliver exceptional experiences as rated by you, our customers, and we're honoured to have been selected. The Trusted Service Award means you can shop with confidence based on the reviews from over 60,000 Hochanda customer experiences. Thank you for your independent reviews. It means a lot to us. Hello everyone, we're the Pink Ink Ladies. I'm Cathy. And I'm Mel. We've been with Hochanda right from the start and we've been crafting for 30 years. We're passionate about fabric, so our main thing is to stamp on fabric or stencil on fabric. We can't wait to show you all our new hand illustrated stamp and stencil designs, whether you're using them on cards or soft furnishings. Cathy and I get together at Pink Ink Towers and we can't wait to share our ideas. We choose all our subject matter together and then Cathy goes away and hand illustrates all our fantastic finished designs and we pride ourselves on the quality of our range. On our shows on Hochanda we're excited to share all our hints, tips and techniques for you to get the most out of our products. Please tune in to the Pink Ink Shows, get inspired on Hachanda. Hello, my name's Stuart and I'm the Managing Director of Oakwood Archer. Oakwood Archer is a family-run business and my son and my daughter work very hard with me to bring the best craft items to you in the UK. We specialise in high-quality items brought into the UK from all over the world, including brands like Kaisercraft, Stampendous and Impression Obsession. Working with Achanda is fantastic for us. It gives us the opportunity to bring all of these brands and all of these products from all over the world direct to you, the crafter in the UK. Our products include stamps, dyes, papers, buttons, trimmings, ribbons and album making kits. Just about everything you need to be a good crafter. So please, don't miss Oakwood Archer Shows on Achanda. Hi, I'm Jean, and together with my partner Malcolm, we run a small business in the northeast of England called Crafty Individuals. At Crafty Individuals, we're mostly involved in the design and manufacture of a very wide range of red rubber art stamps, but we also have a range of background papers and mini images that are also brilliant to create with. Personally, my background is in art and design and crafting and most of the designs have been created by myself. 
We also have a great little team of other artists, friends, who've helped us along the way and have come up with other designs that completely work alongside our own. So do pull up a pew and join us on the Hachanda shows. We can't wait to see you there. for some lunchtime love then for a very very popular one day special and we are talking about beautiful and brilliant and time saving and tidy and waste saving fabric cutting dies slash multimedia dies that we've got here but we're thinking fabric because we're thinking gorgeous quilting and don't run off don't run off just because I said the word quilting, uh, because actually this makes quilting very, very simple and very, very easy for us as well, because one die, six layers of fabric. Brilliant! Less cutting. Um, and it's all thanks to this lady, actually, and Crafts 2 together, oh, isn't it? Oh, bless you. Yeah, well, it kind of all evolved from um, my original concept, which is the mocker block mm -hmm. and the patchmaker square and the binding square. So, yeah, um, but we've gone into the realms of dies now. Potentially, for people um, that have paper cut before, maybe already got a die cutting machine. And I know that there's lots of you out there that kind of watch the quilting shows, watch the sewing shows, and say, I'd love to get into sewing. I've got a sewing machine, but I... I don't know where to start. Yeah, it's, don't know how to get started. It's, it's very, very true. I think that's. I think that's how. Um, actually, this all came about in the first place. Um, having a multimedia die, which you might describe this as as well, because if you take a, a regular, if I just show you the difference between the two, if you look at a regular paper cutting die, of course it's low and it's shallow. It's sharp and it does its job for your paper and your card, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But and you can go through fabric with a lot of um, paper cutting dies, but just maybe one layer. Um, but you can see how much deeper and how much more substantial and how much more metal is involved in these dies here. So you're talking instead of one layer of fabric at a time, you're talking six layers of fabric at a time. And that's conservative as well. You could go actually um, even more, but you don't want to distort your fabric. Six is more mm -hmm. than enough to be going on with. The brilliant thing about this one day special today is you've got lots and lots of different shapes. And this is to make, uh, this is the three inch collection. Um, Lots and lots of different shapes, but you get the same shape more than once. So for every one die of the same shape, think six times over because six layers of fabric through each one. So if you're making a quilting project and you've got a die cutting machine and you think, oh gosh, actually that can do all the accuracy for me. But if I've got one die, then I have to take one layer of fabric through lots and lots of times with one die. This is taking six layers of fabric through at the same time. That might be the same piece folded up you know, in half and half again, by the mm -hmm. way, uh, which is really, really good. So it's a very efficient way of using your fabric. So here are the 17 dies that we get. Uh, we get the two square dies and the two half square triangles. We get the four quarter squares and the four quarter square triangle dies. It's a bit of <laughs> a mouthful, isn't it? I know, this is, it's like another language, I know, <laughs> in the world of quilting, isn't it? You've got your two half square triangles and your three rectangles there. So they ultimately, they are the pieces to make your three inch Blocks, That's it, yeah. And it's they? basically explaining just very, very quickly. You might think to yourself, if you're getting started with your quilting, I want to do something that, say, is, I don't know, a three-inch square. So that could measure three inches. So you think, that's the size that I want to work with. Brilliant. Cut all my fabrics to three inches. But then you might start thinking, well, I want to get a bit creative. First of all, this quilt, this block, by the time you've taken your seam allowance into consideration, it becomes smaller. So the bit that you see on the face of your quilt is actually smaller than what you're looking at there. Cut it in half and stitch it together. Then you'll find it gets smaller again because the seam is taking up some of that fabric and again when you come to do your smaller triangles there again even though every single one of those has been cut out to the same size to start with that's when you start finding it gets shorter and shorter smaller and smaller which is why the dies are perfect because they actually add in the, the kind of seam allowance that you need that gap around them to mean that they all marry up and they all become exactly the same sizes when you're working with them so that's part one. That's the one day special. And that's very, very popular as well, actually. £69.94, which remember, you can break down into two flexes as well. 40% of the one day special has sold out and gone. And it's been an interesting one day special, actually, um, because, because we've got other options on the show and we have all of the way through. Because this is so intuitive to work with the mocker block system, which again, Haley developed. Um, 
which is an absolute genius, by the way, because this is like painted by numbers for those people who want to um, absolutely design their own quilt blocks. That's what this gives you the um, ability to do. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle, by the way. So you can actually uh, make up this to be a nine patch block or up to a 16 um, patch block. And what you do is you, um, and we've got the details of the mocker block system just on its own here at £20. It's essentially all of these jigsaw puzzle pieces, but they're labelled with what the piece will actually be, which I think is brilliant. And this very, very um, quick clip will just show you how you ultimately it turns you into the quilt designer. And I love that. It's brilliant. The other thing it does for you is what's called the, the, the maths. <laughs> I'll try to make that sound more complicated than it was, really. <laughs> but it does the quilt maths for you. If you ever heard the, the term quilt maths, uh, it's an absolute nightmare. It sends quilt designers absolutely potty. It really <laughs> does. They all end up rocking. Um, but this, actually, um, you can watch the earlier show as well to watch this all explained. But it allows you to do the, um, the maths and work out fabric-wise what you're actually going to need as well to make your design block. It's really, really clever. Um, there are full instructions. So if you want the mocker block on its own, £20, 09541. But of course, when there's such a good marriage here and a combination, let's put them together and let's take a saving from the one day special, which is £11, and then let's save a further £5 as well. Put the two together. So, at a price tag that's under £100, this essentially puts the full power of being a quilt designer in your hands and cuts your fabric cu cutting time down dramatically. And it may even, oh, I don't know if I dare say this really, but it might up your ac accuracy ever so slightly yeah. as well. But listen, yeah. beauty is in the eye of the beholder, as, it, as you <laughs> always say. There's always buttons and butterflies, even in the fabric and the quilt world, by the way, <laughs> to cover a multitude of sins. But you want it to be as good as it can be. And this bundle together is just a match made in heaven. It really is. For those people who want to try this mm -hmm. way, for cutting out their quilting pieces. Because it's it? not for everyone, necessarily. Yeah. This might be an alternative to what you do right now. Mm -hmm. But I know there's a lot of people who find the, the, the sheer faff, and actually even maybe the, they can't manage the dexterity of yeah. a rotary cutter yeah. and all of this measuring. And they can frighten people, rotary cutters. They can be dangerous yes. if you're not careful. Yeah. Well, yours needs a new blade, even, doesn't it? It does, Did you yeah. Do I it? forgot to change it earlier on as well, so we'll see how that pans out. Um, so, I've got my cutting mat loaded up with some of my dies to start with. So, what I've got here is I've chosen to use some of the squares. So, these four squares, when they're stitched together, they will make a piece that's going to be three, um, three inches that's going to be in my quilt as well. Then I've used these um, small triangles. These are actually called, in the quilting world, quarter square triangles, because you've basically got a square that's been cut into quarters. And they're triangles, so there you go, quarter square triangles. So it isn't quite as scary as it first sounds. So I've laid those down, I've got them on a magnetic sheet and I've got them on my cutting board, um, mat, um, not cutting mat, my cutting plate here, as you can see. Now these dies are compatible to work with any die cutting machine on the market, whether it's a computerized one, electronic one, um, should I say, or whether it is one of your manual ones where you're turning your handle, it doesn't really matter. And what I've done is here, I've actually got some fabrics. These are about five inches wide. I've trimmed them so as they're all the same width. And I've been a little bit clever with my construction of my fabrics because I'm thinking ahead to how I'm going to have these in my quilt. So these two pieces, I'm going to have those two fabrics face together because when I take them to my sewing machine, they'll need to be faced together. And again, I'm going to do that for the next two and the next two. And you'll see that we've actually got six layers of fabric in total there. So it's kind of quilting cotton that we've got here. I have got it hanging out the bottom of your um, the plate. Um, yeah. That's twice today. It's twice, yeah. <laughs> do as I say, not do as I do. So you trim that off and pass it through. I don't like wasting any fabric. You'll know that by now. So I'm even going to slide it down a little bit further there to make sure. Just make sure that the dies are covered, because obviously if you don't cover them, then they're not going to be the true shapes that you need for your quilt. Um, magnetic, not magnetic, um, metal plate. I'm going to bring that in your metal shim, because it's always better um, when it cuts metal on metal. And I know it looks very springy at the moment, and it has got lots of marks in there. But that's not an issue, it's just one of those things that happens. And then all you need to do is with your plate, you just rotate and flip that in the same way. If you are a paper crafter, you'll have been doing that already, I am sure. And then I'm just going to pop everything onto the plate. I'm working with the GoPro, um, Go Power, but as I say, you can work with a whole host of different um, die cutting machines. And you just make up your platform in the same way as they suggest for um, a multimedia die. And take it to the machine, pop it in the letterbox as I you do. I know we're not here to talk about the, the die cutting machine, but I'm... 
I've, this is the first time I've seen this one today. Isn't it quiet? It is, it's brilliant. Normally, it's like a juggernaut coming through the room, yes, isn't it, you listening know, to a die-cutting the, the machine? The whole house knows. And yes. have you noticed we haven't got a huge amount of cracking and snapping no, and popping no. as it goes through? And I'll explain why. And that's because we've been working with six layers of fabric. Now, these dies will cut more than that. I've cut um, eight layers of quilting cotton. I've even gone further than that. But what you do find is it will have an effect on your plates. It'll make them warp and bend which again is something that we're all familiar with and it also makes the awful cracking noise and that loud noise which is such a scary noise so I tend to stick to the six layers because I find I'll get a best cut with those and also it's kind of having a less effect on damaging things Watch so this okay here we go so we've got our little quarter squares there um, we've got our next set of quarter squares. Just rolling this fabric back, we've got our little triangles. Now you might occasionally get little nicks there. There's one tiny thread, and that can be down to the style of fabric that you've got. Um, sometimes some are more fibrous, the weave, it just depends. Occasionally you'll get just a little nick like that. It's not a huge amount. Um, and then basically just pulling your fabrics back, and again at the bottom there, just going to nick those out. I'd actually put eight dies on that die plate, to right, be so honest. That's eight, so, eight, that's so that's a lot. 48. 48 layers of or 48 Oops, pieces have been cut that through one? that one pass and that's so eight dies cutting through six layers all at the same time because normally okay. you think okay well this might be a better die but maybe should i put them in just one at a time even though there's six layers in one no you can absolutely just go for it on one plate all the pieces. I mean, you look at all of the pieces here well, and how they go together, that. you'll be amazed. Um, so there you go. So those are all those pieces. I've laid those all down. They are all now ready to take to my sewing machine. So those, I can pick them up. I can stitch along that edge there, that short edge, stitch them together, press and open it up, and away we go. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of the fabric and lay that down. All that dye's moved around again. Pop those on there. Pop it through the die cutting machine. And then I'm using up the rest of that fabric, and I'm doubling up. So what did you say, 48? Yeah, so it's six eighths of 48, So isn't it's just it? yeah, shy yeah. of 100 pieces then. That's that bonkers. And now, I am going to trim this off now. I am going to be quite ruthless with this one because I don't want these kind of straggly bits getting caught. Um, so there you go. Let me just, uh, what was, I was just about to ask you a question there, and I just popped out of my, oh, right, okay, so if you hadn't have, yes, so if you hadn't have stopped to show us, once you've got them out of the dies, um, there we go. So you what? literally just lay your fabric back That's over it. them again, so, and back through, so literally, I mean, even, let's extend it, within a minute and a half, you'll have cut those nearly a hundred pieces, that's it, and it's cutting out another 48 now. So here you can see I'm putting those together. It's all right, I've got one hand on the die cutting machine so the, the plates don't go off the edge of the table. But then I can start laying these out. So here we go. So there's one patch that we've made. Um, then I've got the squares. Now the squares, they will work. We'll put, stitch those together in little pairs. They will come together to make another little patch. Then I could go back in with the ones with the triangles. Again, creating these, making that design into whatever you want it to be. Now I'm just overlapping them to kind of mimic the sewing that you would be doing because obviously it all comes together a little bit smaller when you do overlap them and stitch them together but there you go so we've got 48 pieces there to start with the die cutting machine has just cut me out it's like having a little cutting friend there helping you that you don't have to worry about they get on with the cutting while you get on with the sewing and the piecing together there you go you've got another six layers there with your squares another six layers there with your squares and again it just means that you get on to the fun bit which is the sewing and in an hour can can you imagine how many pieces you could cut out in an hour ready for a quilt? I know, that's bonkers, isn't it? When you think about the scale of a quilt, and it's a fairly simple quilt, if it's, you know, if you're using just maybe one or two fabrics, like um, this one's so using, what, three different fabrics on this, on this one behind me here. Um, so if you think about every one of those is a, what's this, one, two, three, four, so that's a four, that's a 12 patch block, isn't it, that one? Uh, is that right? 16, that one. Yeah, 4 by oh, 4 yes, of course. Oh, yeah, it's 4 by 4 isn't it? <laughs> 4 times 4 is 16. No. <laughs> this is why I need mocha block as well. It really helps you with maths. <laughs> maths was never my strong point. And since being on the telly, it's got even worse. <laughs> yeah, so that's a 16-patch um, block. So if you think about it, if you're making... So that quilt has... Right, let me see if I can get this right. 3 by 4 3 by 4 3 times 4 is 12. So this has got 12 patches that I can see. Yes, Tw right. yeah, 12, 12 blocks. blocks. Yeah. 
So if you think about all of that, don't think about the numbers, but you think about the speed as well. It's about the speed of being able to cut out all of these different pieces and get on making the quilt. Because often, your fabric selection, that's the fun part of quilting. And the putting together, the piecing together, and then, oh, wait till you free motion. We get a free motion foot on your sewing machine. That, that again, is another complete brilliance. Um, but fun bit is actually watching the quilt come to be, isn't it, really? Um, and once you're confident with one, which is about having the right tools on your side as well, to keep you accurate, to keep you, you know, where you need to be. But once you've done something like that, that you've designed yourself, and you've run one of these out, you'll be like, right, that's it. Right, who wants a quilt design? <laughs> and then you start thinking, right, oh, look, actually, you know, and then you start thinking of, of gifts and you start thinking of, you know, seasonal variations and whatever. I mean, look, Hayley's there who, who's lost for words for a moment which is you know <laughs> well i'm just not thinking good for us in our game I'm but frantically trying to get these pieces down because to be honest it's going to take me ages to get all of these out because like you say we've got was it about 96, 96 pieces yeah. here that i've just cut in the, a matter of what less than a couple of minutes yes which is bonkers um so again it's time saving they're all accurately cut. You know they're all the same because you picked them out of the die when it cut. <laughs> so you it. know they're exactly the same. Now, one thing I want to ask you about, um, Hayley, is yeah. traditionally mm -hmm. when we cut shapes like these for all of the, you know, the flying geese and the, the half square triangles and all of the other quilting words that we hear all the time, yes. is that normally we are cutting square squares yes. and square triangles because they've yeah. got square pointy edges yes. and we've got bits left over That's we right. haven't got that with this you haven't no i'm just gonna pop this last little one in the corner there just to kind of make it a nice neat kind of rectangle that creates i've still got loads there so i could replicate that again so you can imagine just how quickly your design comes together yeah. now you're quite right usually when you're cutting out your pieces um you will cut out your squares which you'll do a series of um, rows of stitching and then you'll dissect the square up to make things Things like your quarter square triangles that you've got here. What you will find is you'll get these little edges here. So um, let me just put it on top of there. Will that show it off a little bit better maybe? You've got these little kind of dog ear bits that oh, yeah. stick out. So usually what you have to do is come along with your scissors, trim those off. You end up for every block or every patch, you would end up with four of those. Can you imagine if you're making a quilt and you're going to need a hundred of those, you're going to have little bits all over the place. Well, you imagine for the 96 pieces that you just cut, we yeah. would have to do that 48 times over, wouldn't yes. we? Well, depending yeah. on how many, how many, you know, joins and seams there are. But so that's a lot of extra work on top of all the long cutting that you've just done already. That's it. And it's just really irritating. So, yeah, you'd literally have to come along, snip those off, and that's before you start putting the pieces together. The reason being is you need those out of the way in order for you to line up those corners. And you can see if you don't make it bang on, then sometimes it can be a little bit wrong. Yeah. And, of course, that has a knock-on effect when you start doing your stitching and getting those corners together. Yeah. One of the benefits of going for the dies is that when it's cutting, and you'll have noticed those rounded corners that you've got with each, of those pieces what that means is it's nice and easy and i feel myself personally i find it easier to actually line these up the corners of these because you've kind of got several points going around the corner mm -hmm. that you're lining up rather than just that one point in the corner one point there and then you basically just stitch that with your quarter inch seam and then you've got your two pieces together that you would stitch obviously to make your um, triangle your larger triangle and then you'll do it again to make your little patch and you can see that that has not been trimmed off at all. I've not had to bring my scissors anywhere yeah. near that. That's literally how it's come out of the die cutting machine onto the sewing machine, stitching those pieces together. Not got as much bulk in the middle as well because you haven't got those points. You've got that little kind of curve there. And that means that those two can come together quite easily because I just literally pop that on top of there. And as a novice quilter, especially if you're a paper crafter going into quilting, that is much easier for you to line to up, match. I yeah. feel personally, yeah. than the short sharp corners and then of course you can start adding in the other shapes as well because they're all going to have the rounded corners so it could be that you're using your little squares to sit in the months there because that might be the way that you've designed your block it's brilliant um now i uh, listen i know we're saying fabric 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 there's far from many other things that these can go through other than fabric because they are also we, we're calling them fabric dyes but you can think of them completely and utterly as multimedia dies as well. If you want to cut through something like grey board with these dies, you absolutely can. It means you can tackle tougher materials that you might than you might tackle in you know in your um, 
in your die cutting machine alone. It means you can go through thicker materials, means you can go through things like, uh, like leather. I mean, quite often, you know, a paper, a paper crafting die, if I show you it in profile, it almost disappears, doesn't it? Because it's very, very low. Um, it's got a very, very low profile. You compare that with the, with the fabric die, with the multimedia die there, you can see that the actual cutting blade itself is much, much higher. So we're saying six layers of fabric. It's actually capable of doing more, but you do get to a stage with fabric where the sheer pile of the fabric is then affected by the way the rollers come over in a die cutting machine and that would slightly distort the fabric. So stick with, I mean, six at a time is, you know, that's fair go, Hayley, really, isn't it? Oh, six gosh, layers yeah. at one go. Yeah, It's definitely. brilliant. I mean, that cuts down your cutting time by at least six, doesn't it, by my reckoning? And that's <laughs> Although, before you start that. counting the mistakes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, it's brilliant. I think it's such a good idea. I really, really do. Um, a lot of people are going for the um, the bundle of the dies with the mocker block together because they're so intuitively matched, I have to say. Uh, there are some people who will always be devotees to cutting, um, you know, in that kind of manual way, and that's absolutely fine. Um, this is an alternative to that. And actually, I think everyone's at a different stage. When you hear quilting, a lot of people who hear quilting for the first time are like, no, 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 no. It's all right, there's not a bee in the studio, but that's what often people's reaction to quilting can be when they're not familiar. But they watch the fabric show and they go, I love them fabrics, you know, I love those fabrics, I love those quilts, love what it can do. But the whole, oh, taking that big, beautiful fabric and cutting it down and then, and then sewing it back together and this, that and the other and all the maths involved with that and whatever. This just takes some of the worry out of this. And this... This puts creativity right in your hands because this gives you the ability to actually design your own quilt blocks and you've got everything you need for that as well. What I would suggest as well, by the way, if you missed the 8 o'clock show this morning, watch that back on Rewind because we do a really nice sort of in-depth explanation of how that works. Um, it's not just simply like a jigsaw puzzle. It's absolutely putting uh, a quilt design. It makes you a quilt designer. Imagine your name up in lights, just like Handmade by Haley here. This could be you in the future. Derek Marks quilt designer, Derek Marks original. Like a badge of honour. Yeah, oh, you've got a Derek Marks in your collection. Lucky you, not everyone's got that. <laughs> anyway, right, um, let's come back down to earth, shall we? What we've got here is, again, another, another set of... I'm calling this genius, and I'm not doing that because just because Hayley's a very good friend of mine. I am saying that because I've seen a lot of tools in the fabric world in quite a few different places over quite a few years now. And I don't work with fabric, um, so I simply observe from the outside. And I've seen oh, hundreds and hundreds of different types of quilting ruler. I mean, you can have a quilting ruler that's, you know, the, the size of your arms outstretched, um, some fold down into 6, 12 and whatever. Um, but sometimes I think, OK, yes, you do need some bigger scale rulers when you're doing the start of cutting down your fabric. But once you get down to the size of half square and quarter square triangles we've just been seeing with Haley putting together there, you want tools that are in scale with the work that you're doing. Yes, absolutely. How about, how about something where the instructions on how to use the particular tool are actually on the tool? I mean, it makes it so, so simple. This, your patch maker square, is just brilliant because you can actually, as it says, you can make different shape patches or uh, shapes for your patches from the same tool. And that tool is not also trying to be a ruler and something else and something else at the same time. Mm -hmm. It is for that one job. And this one, which is your binding um, tool, is uh, you, uh, the most simple way of <laughs> making your bias binding um, tape, your binding um, tape for your, the outside and the borders of your quilt. That's the, one of the most simplest ways I've ever seen to do it. And I've seen lots and lots of tools over the time where you need almost like to be an octopus and you need like eight <laughs> sets of hands to be able to do all the different things you need to do. And for every different size of tape, you have a new tool for every different mm -hmm. size of tape. This does loads in one, is one of the most simple. And, of course, you've got 
um, your third ruler as well, which yeah. is a very, very intuitive ruler. Mm -hmm. And half the stock of this has gone because we've had massively busy shows um, on this. I know the 8 o'clock show on this bundle was really, really busy this morning. So, listen, enough yatter from me. I'll <laughs> let Hayley walk you through the set because for £20, be the best £20 you spend in terms of quilting tools that just do the job. Hayley, oh, all yours. You. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, when you actually saw them on the set there, um, they are clear, these rules as well. So just in case you, you thought, oh, I, they're, they're white, I can't see through them. So what we've got here, you've got a series of three, and they kind of all work together and support each other um, with regards to your quilting project. So basically, you've got everything that you need here to cut your fabrics ready for a quilt, whatever size you're wanting to make them. First thing that you've got is your quilt, um, this ruler that I've created. Now this, I'm not saying it's the only quilt ruler you will ever buy but I simplified it down because what I found when I started quilting there were so many lines on quilt rulers because you had sixteenths, you had eighths on there, you had quarters, you had inches and what I tended to find is a lot of um, rulers are kind of trying to make it so you get so many 30 different things you can do in one ruler which is great but when you are starting to learn you want it all stripped back a bit like your washing machine or your microwave or you might have 30 different programs but really you just want to be quick and easy just go for the same one well that's what this does but you've got your red lines which will give you your quarter inch marking so you've got your quarter your half your three quarters and of course the darker one there being your inch mark uh, marking so you've got those four inches across and it will go up to 14 inches down the side but what you've also got is this mitered end to it and that's important when it comes to making your binding because quite often when you're making your binding to go around your quilt you're going to need quite a long piece because you want it to go all the way around so that will help you it gives you the right edge that 45 degree angle to make your binding tape so that's useful to have to start with also means you can trim your fabrics down ready to use with the other rulers now I'm going to bring the binding square in which is what you would usually use at the end of the process of making your quilt but it's just so as I can get it out of the way and it's, it's quite quick to demonstrate so whoops flip that over so I've got my pin so the binding square what you've got in here is you've got a series of little slots um, there's two slots in each pairing and then you'll see down the side it says you finished width now this will enable you to make your binding in um, well it's up to four different widths so might be that you're going for your two inch or well, your two inch might be good if you're doing things like bag handles and straps and things like that then you've got your one and three quarters which is slightly smaller one and a half and then you've got your finished inch of course these can then be folded over again so when you're working with a quilt quite often you would have your pieces so your patches if I bring them in from my my dies imagine that is kind of your finished quilt it would sit half of the fabric would be on the back and half of the fabric would be on the front and it neatens it off it gives it that lovely edge so it does work alongside the dies as well quite ne um, quite ni nicely so those are your different sizes the overall size itself as well is three and a half inches so if you did want to take one of your patches and you wanted to square it up then you can put that on there and you can kind of use it to, to square up your patches as well before you come sewn together but the main reason people buy this is to make your own binding so the binding that you've got where have I put my strip oh there it is I've changed colour didn't I mm -hmm. so oh the little holes in the corners again the little holes in the corners can be used you've got a hole in the middle and the hole in the corners because that again shows you where the centre of your patch is and then you can see where you've got it kind of all perfectly lined up so they're all kind of little tools to help you with your, your lining up of those so thank you for asking on it um, so we've got the um, fabric here which I've cut and I've cut it to three inches wide because I'm actually going to make my one and a half inch wide um, binding so all I'm going to do is start off on whichever end you choose is up to you potentially left or right-handed I'm right-handed so I start on the right-hand side if you're left-handed you may do it the other way it doesn't matter um, and then you just bring it in the ends together just to get yourself started with your hot iron just press those in place um, and it's only just a little bit little bit of a press there just to, to get the fabrics going so as you can feed them through so what you do is you take it to the square and you go up well you choose whichever size it is that you're working with and it does actually tell you on there that you cut your fabric to double the width of um, the actual um, binding that you make in there so again you're not going to lose any instructions with this so we're going for the one and a half which is always the last one isn't it that you go to keep rotating it around you feed it up at the center so it's the one that's closest to the middle and then you feed it down the outside piece 
as well so it's kind of fitting through that little slot and then all you're doing is you're basically going to pull that along your fabric but before we do that we're going to secure the fabric in place on the mat probably should have pressed that for a little bit longer because it's jumping around but that's not a problem so a couple of little pins pop those in like so the friction that you actually get from using the the binding tool actually can get you started with your, your pressing if you wanted to it depends on your fabrics that you're working with but most times I will use it with an iron um, and what I'm doing is I'm keeping an eye on the little circle in the middle and the horizontal line and I'm making that making sure that that runs along the raw edges that I've got of my tape so I'm going to move it along a little bit so as I can get the tip of my iron in place now the iron against the rule isn't going to be a problem it might be with you you pins so just keep an eye on those because they may well melt if you're not careful so I'm just going to nudge that across and then I'm going to use that and keep that rule nice and horizontal following that center line keeping that fabric tensioned nicely and as you can see as you're working your way you're pressing your binding together as you go when you run out of space then you simply take your pins out move it along a little bit press that down uh, sorry put the pins back down there and then off you go again so again Hold it's genius it. this isn't it i mean i, I love it and, <laughs> and the thing is that strip you could have pre-cut it and used used your um used your other ruler to make one long strip yeah um and that could be three miles long yeah and you can easily. make the whole but i mean i don't know what you would find that it's would be three miles quilt. long <laughs> yeah it would be very big wouldn't it um but the thing is when you want to buy binding tape and i didn't realize this was such a such a thing but when you want to buy uh, bias binding tapes. The sizes are always pre-dictated um, and quite often it is difficult to mm -hmm. get them in um, certain colours. They're in, they're in like classic colours, the ones that sell the most, which yes. would be very, very neutral. It might be that you've got a plain quilt and you want a really, really jazzy binding. Um, it, you know, it might be what you want that scrappy binding look and you want to combine loads of old scraps together to make it. This is brilliant because all you have to do is, you know, bond the strips together or get them together and then let the maker do everything else. It's just genius. And it really is getting lots and lots of attention, Hayley, as well, isn't it? There are people that have worked with fabric for years and years and years that are going, like, how? How have you managed to do that so simply when, you know, there are companies that are making uh, machines, well, not machines, but gadgets that are a mixture of metals and plastics and like you you really do need like three hands to to guide everything in in that end and then you're thinking i've got to iron this as well <laughs> like like i only have two hands like i need another two people to help me just to make a binding and that's when you think well why the heck am i making it am i making it if it's such a chore and it's such hard work <laughs> you would never make it would you that's it. that makes it so so simple shall i show you the last one yes, in the please. series yes. so the last one is the patch maker square now this is the one that will do the job that the dies were doing earlier on some people prefer to work with a rule some people like to work with dies it's entirely up to you but this is designed so as you can actually cut out your squares your large triangles for your half square triangles and your smaller triangles to make your quarter square triangles in three different sizes so you've got your two inches your three inches and you've got your four inches all on the same ruler again I am terrible for losing instructions which is why I wanted it all on the uh, the actual square itself so I can see it there so I'm going to work in a similar way that we we're working before three inches to show you the same so I'm going to start off with my quarter square triangles and this is where I was talking about the fact that you might think to yourself oh quarter square they're the smallest triangle so surely I need a small square to start with no you need it larger because what will actually happen is you'll start eating away with that seam allowance so even though the pieces that you've got here started off size um, as that that size when you stitch them together you can see they're much smaller because you're losing your fabrics and you're losing a quarter of an inch every single time with every single seam. So it's every cut isn't it every yeah. cut you make into a Pretty fabric much, yeah. makes it a quarter of an inch smaller. Does indeed and because so, <laughs> that's the thing you know when you think and I said this earlier in the earlier show can we can I just come over here a second just to show you just to show you this quilt again because uh, and this is what blew my mind about quilting I didn't really understand it when I first started talking about it on telly about four years ago three four years ago but if you oh sorry right if you look here and let's just say that that is one single patch I just thought, okay, so that's a big square of that cream fabric, and then I just cut that bit of that fabric and just, you know, <laughs> sew it onto the top. I had no idea, but of course, when you do know, you think, 
you would never do it that way, Derek, because you're doubling up on the fabric, you're doubling up on the bolt, you're wasting, it's ridiculous, it's never going to work at all. When you realise how it's done, that's where, when you're planning a quilt, this is where the mocker block really comes in to its, in, into its own as well, because it's about what you have to pre-plan. So you can't just in your head draw a picture and just go, OK, I'll have my quilt block that shape, mm -hmm. and just go cut out yeah, those sizes. That size, yeah. Because when, when it happens, you think, hang on a second, when I planned it out, it was that big. But now yeah. I've sewn it all together, it's only that big. Like, well, it's a bit like the house cushion above that quilt yes, there. I mean, this, that's another one. It's beautiful. Um, with, Love that this. was done with the mocker block system, because again, you can put those pieces in place to get that shape together. I wouldn't yeah. know the first place to start doing that. No. And then, because I've got an embroidery machine, I've gone in and I've added some applique on there to give it even more personality. Yeah. So, whether you are a novice sewer or an accomplished sewer, might be that you're more into your machine embroidery than you are at your quilting. A bit like Marianne who tried and tested um, the, the rule that I'm about to show you. Or maybe a complete novice like our Paula is, because both of them used the system, the original system that I've just been showing you here, um, and they both loved it for different reasons. So, uh, yeah. I love it. I think it's awesome. Right, sorry, right. Okay. You were, so, you were saying. That's all right. So I've trimmed my fabrics down, and I've done exactly the same as we spoke of before. So I've got my two fabrics right sized together, because this is how I'm going to actually stitch these fabrics together. So when you actually come to working with the, um, with the ruler, what you need to do is find the, the, the line that you want. So I'm going to cut out the quarter square triangles. So you can see that it says, use this line for your quarter square triangles. And there's even a little arrow to point you in the right direction. So I need to make sure that that line at the bottom is lined up with the bottom of my fabric. So you need to make sure you've got a nice, neat edge to start with with your fabric. Mm -hmm. So that's going to line up with the bottom line. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same for the vertical line. I'm going to slide it along and make sure that that line is on the edge of my fabric as well as that horizontal line being on my fabric. And then all I'm going to do is take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut up. There we go. <laughs> a little bit further. Um, because a little bit further means I can move that fabric out of the way and I can actually come across horizontally as well. And there you go. That is now cut to make my quarter square triangles. Now I can use whatever method I like. I can either take it to the machine, draw a line, stitch either side, or if you are a novice quilter, you might want to do it this way. Make it into the triangles. Um, something I will say though is if you are going to be dissecting your pieces, just be aware that you are then cutting on the bias, so you have to be careful not to stretch your fabrics as you go. Mm -hmm. But there you go. You can see I have got the pieces that I need then in the same way as I cut them with the die a few moments ago, but I've cut them manually. So there we go. So those are my quarter square triangles. For the block that I'm creating, I might need to have some half square triangles, which is where you've just got the two triangles together. So again, I'm going to come back in. They're still going to be three inches because I need those two patches to, to sit next to each other in the quilt. So I'm going to slide it down. This time I'm going to use that middle line, the half square triangle. There we go. And then I'm going to put the vertical line and the horizontal line in place. And again, I'm going to cut a little bit beyond the ruler so as I can flip the fabric out of the way. And then I can come across at that angle as well there. There you go. So that is now ready for me again. That, so that's smaller because you're only cutting it once. That's right, yeah. So there we go. So now those are my half square triangles. And when I stitch those together, they will work alongside the quarter square triangles that I just cut. But again, using it with the manual ruler if you prefer to do it that way. It's like sorcery, isn't it? The whole language of quilting. But when you get it, and it's tools like this that really kind of put it into your head, isn't it? 078331 is your item number. Um, don't, they do come with a little case as well that you can keep them all in. But to be honest with you, they'll be out on your desk. Once you start with this, you'll be out, they'll be out on your desk the whole time. Um, £20, 078331. Lots more on the website as well. Lots of other options there. Um, you've got the power clips there, which are really, really good. I think they're, they're so, so good. Um, if you're wanting to clip the edge of a project that you're working on, you've got pre-wound bobbins on there. There's freezer paper. Um, oh, free motion foot. You wait till you got a free motion foot for your sewing machine. Oh, it is like that moment that you first drive the car after you've passed your uh, driving test. Amazing, amazing. Uh, there's a grab and go bag kit there as well, which is always very, very popular um, in lots and lots of different colours. All full instructions in there. Uh, from Haley as well. I saw one of those grab and go bags earlier. Oh, you've got one there, haven't you? Uh, very, very nice. Fifteen ninety nine, and lots more on the website as well. Right. Okay.
Now, I've got to remember not to talk over this this, this time because you won't hear what I'm saying. Uh, but here's some examples of quilts that you can make up using both the mocker block system and, of course, these fabri fabulous dies. Amazing what you can do, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing what you can do. Um, today's one day special, if you're just joining us at this kind of late stage of the of the one day special, there's just one more live hour um, this afternoon on the one day special. What you've got are these multimedia dies, these dies that have the ability and they've been designed for quilting. So they've been designed um, to make three inch patches. Um, for these, which is really, really good. I'll show you the um, the, the dies and what you actually get. Um, I just want to show you very, very briefly, just very, very quickly, just the difference between, so I just need to find the equivalent size, the difference between um, a regular paper cutting die and these, what we're describing as um, fabric cutting dies or multimedia dies, as you might um, hear them described. It's the depth of that cutting blade. It's, it's the actual, it's the heft of the metal that's being used as well. There's more metal being used there. It's got more integrity to it because, of course, it's much more important that if you're cutting fabric, that, that shape is absolutely true. Um, but that has the ability to go through six layers of fabric at the same time. And the brilliant thing about this is when you get the dies, and I'll just walk you through the dies that you're actually getting. So when you've got your quarter, quarter square triangle dies and your... Um, quarter square dies rather than getting just one of them so that would take you through six layers of fabric and give you six triangles at a time there are four identical dies so where we're talking quarters you'll get the full four quarters so every every configuration of four you can times by six in terms of layers of fabric which is really really brilliant so that's a real head start in cutting your pieces um, then you've got your your larger square dies and your half square triangle dies um, of course there um, plus your half square rectangles and your rectangles as well now that allows you to basically create Everything that you see, if I just whiz in the mocker block for a second, that allows you to make everything, every shape that you have in the mocker block system to then design your own quilt. So that's what these dies are designed to be able to do. 17 dies in total. And these are like, I don't even want to say heavy duty dies. It's the way they're naturally designed. But having all of these, and please don't think they're for fabric alone, because, you know, um, paper crafters, you can use them uh, with grey board, to cut through grey board very, very successfully and very, very easily, uh, which you couldn't necessarily, necessarily do with your regular um, paper cutting dies, with which I've lost that one. Oh, there it is. Um, because, you know, you'd have to go through again and again and again and again. And by the time you'd finished, you'd think, oh, darn it, give me the craft knife. There's no point in this. Uh, do you know what I mean? So this allows you to do um, shapes in much more substantial materials as well. And when we talk about fabrics, don't forget, we're also talking about things like leathers and oil cloths and those things that your regular paper cutting dies could never even wish to try and attempt. And so you could almost make multimedia versions of quilting in terms of shapes um, with these as well which i think is really really lovely um 69.94 is your price tag that's down into two flexes as well i do believe isn't it on your one day special today 34 pounds and 97 pence now there is the option as well to combine the dies that we've got here which are a revolution i think for anyone who's kind of just knocking on the door of quilting You've got to have a mocker block. A mocker block is such a good idea. As I say, if you've got the chance to watch the 8 a.m. show on Rewind to see the sort of more fuller demonstration of the mocker block, it's brilliant. So basically with what you get is all of these shapes here and basically a puzzle frame, which will allow you to make up either, um, you can see there, a, uh, a nine-patch block 
up to a 16 patch block as well. This video, which Hayley made, a genius video, this is brilliant. Um, it shows you how easy it is to put together. Because actually, it's when you move shapes around, because you might think, well, surely there's only a certain amount of things you can do with the shapes that you've got there. Mm -mm, absolutely not. You need to start putting these together and messing around with them and, and da 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 da. Um, and then you can, as the name suggests, you can mock how that block will look. And remember, one block, if you've, if you've cracked one block, that's a cushion top, isn't it? That's a cushion cover, sorted. So if you can get a cushion cover sorted, then you can move on to something like a table runner. And if you can get a table runner sorted and you think, oh, I'm, I'm good at this old quilting stuff now, I might go for a lap quilt or I might go for a baby quilt, smaller project first. And if you get that licked and that's maybe three or four blocks long or wide or whatever, it won't be long before you're, you're up to the stage of designing something like this, a full on quilt that you designed. So that's the thing about quilt design, it's changing all the time. There are, of course, the standard kind of blocks. There are, you know, there are standard blocks, aren't there? There are many of those that have been designed and named by quilters around the world, Hayley, aren't there? Oh, gosh, there's loads. I mean, it, straight away you start thinking of uh, things like churn dash, things like yeah. um, uh, flying geese. These are very yeah. traditional things. That Courthouse steps, it, yeah. so all of these, well, and there's loads of them. But one of the things that I used to find is you'd see them perhaps in a book or you might get the instructions off the internet or something like that, and what they will always say is, right, you need to cut so many squares at, I don't know, um, four and um, four and a half. Then there might be one that you have to cut at three and seven eighths. And, and it's all cross-referencing. Yeah. I was making too many mistakes, yeah. which is why this whole system kind of came about. Um, and another thing that I like as well is the fact that you can use and turn your scraps into usable pieces, because many of us will kind of gather up scraps of fabric that we, we've paid good money for. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure many of you will recognize some of these ones, and you know mm -hmm. that you're buying them, and you're spending a lot of money buying these fabrics. So I also want to make a way that I can turn those into something that I can actually use together and turn them back into fabrics. So, uh, well, I mean, they're always fabrics, but larger yeah, yeah, pieces yeah. of fabrics. Well, you want something that can be seen rather than something that's sitting in a drawer That's or in, it, your, yeah. in your stash. Yeah, and they, they're nice fabrics, we want to get them out. So yeah. I've put together a series of dies, and I've put them down the middle of the platform this time because I'm going to cover them over. You can see I haven't quite got enough to cover that bottom one there, but that's not an issue at all, it doesn't matter. Um, things like your strip rolls, so if you've got your jelly rolls, your strip rolls, those kind of things, then you can use those. Again, just make sure that you're covering up those dies as you go. Um, could be fabrics that you've got on larger pieces that you're folding over, it doesn't matter, just make sure. And I'm just going to count these because I think I might have put one extra in there. I think I have there. Let's go with those. That's six there. So I'm going to pop those in there. And you can kind of arrange those. Just be careful that they're not overlapping. And because I've got the magnetic sheet on this one, it is keeping them um, in position. So just going to lay my fabrics over the top there. Again, this is the sort of thing that you will find me doing, sat watching the telly in the kitchen. Um, I'll be sat at uh, the island in the middle with the machine there, ready to go, laying up all my dies and literally just making a stash of pieces that I then kind of put, basically put into my deflector and I'll show you that in just a, um, a second. And then I just basically start working with those. Now, hold on, let's just pull that back a bit because for some reason it hasn't gone through and I think it's just I haven't lined it up. Right, let's try again. Let me pull it out. It's having a moment, isn't it? Well, it's only because I think it might have twizzled. I've looked at the fabric there and it's kind of twizzled around because it's a little bit longer. Because they're thinner pieces, I am going to trim that off. I think it's probably wise to do that with those. So there you go. Um, they were hanging out a little bit and it kind of swizzled around. So let's pop that back on there. Metal plate goes on. Then the C plate goes on top of that. And then you offer it back up to the machine. Press on the run key and it will go through. There it goes. Off it goes. So this is basically where I end up with all those pieces that I've cut out. So I end up with a huge stash of them, as you can see here. So I've got some of the, the skinny rectangles. I end up with some of the larger ones as well there. I've got things like the half square triangles here. Um, and then basically all I do is I've turned those pieces that were kind of misshapes and odd sizes and, and bits that have been kind of cut out of them previously. And I turn them into pieces that I can then use. So I've got things like my little squares and I'll show you use for those, my triangles, my rectangles. That fabric then moved a little bit, so a couple of those I might not be able to use. But to be honest, sometimes it's quicker just to lay down the fabrics and just mm -hmm. discard those ones and think, oh, I'll put that one in my stuffing bag, because that's what I've got as well for any of those scraps that are left.
left oh, over. That's a good idea, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. And then basically, I've got them ready to pour together. So. You no, know, I was just thinking, Haley, as well. If you if you made up, you know, either via the mocker block or or you know, or just putting pieces together until you've got one giant square of scrappy shapes in any direction or whatever. Actually, if you look at what Haley's got right now. As a kind of is that what you're talking about? Well, no. But, uh, what I was thinking is that you could make the equivalent of that in completely different shapes um, and just put it together randomly. You don't necessarily have to quilt that from there. No. You don't have to put that. I'm going to use whatever. it for a plique. Yeah, or it, it could be it could turn into the cover for something. It, you could turn that into a, a into a napkin kind of affair. Mm -hmm. You could just back it very very simply with no stuffing in the middle, no wadding or anything like that, and turn it into a napkin. Oops. So we're making a lot of noise. Do, isn't there? Well, this is it. I just should have got this out before we started. I didn't really think about it. So what I've got here is I've got some of my um, my fusible webbing. Yeah. And I'm just going to pop this on the back. I'm going to get my um, applique mat out so I don't get glue everywhere. Let's pop that down on there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this to my back of my fabric. because so I'm actually going to do a little applique project or get it in place. I'm not actually going to stitch it out because we haven't yeah. got a lot of time in order to do that. So all I'm doing is I'm literally putting this fusible on the back. Yeah. And this is going to be loads and loads of little tiny gluey dots um, that will actually attach to a tote bag to use up the scraps that I've got. Now I'm going to just trim that off at the bottom yeah. like so. I can just about see where the fabrics are there. So go down there. And then again you, with this you can just really just patch it together mm -hmm. um, where you need it to go. So I'm put that run down the side there and I just need to cut out another little bit for the bottom. Might So this whole thing you're just going to fuse to, to a bag? To a bag, yeah. And nice. then of course you could stitch it in place if you wanted to as well. Um, it's even the satisfaction of putting together something like that because your squares have been cut accurately. These are all bits that you just piece I, them together randomly. These as you are just want bits to. that I would normally be throwing away. Yeah. Um, so they, it might take you a while to actually gather up these, but to say that in an hour I had cut out so many of these I couldn't get over how many there were, were there. Right. So that's my fabric now. So I've got that on the back, so that will be ready for me to actually cut out in a few moments. Got my freezer paper. I've printed out my design here, um, which I'm going to um, line up on here, pull that towards me like so. And then all I'm going to do is iron, oh, actually I think I've got that on the wrong side. Yeah, I have got it on the wrong side. Let me just flip that over and then just bring that in. Actually, I'm going to, I might trim around it. Where's my paper scissors? Oh, I haven't got my paper scissors, not to worry. Um, so yeah, basically I've, I've printed on the wrong side of my, fuser, um, my freezer paper, I think. So yeah, it's not allowing me to kind of fuse the two together. But basically what you would do is you trim around that so you'd end up with your cat shape. Um, you'd actually put that onto your fabric. If I do it that way around, you can't really see the design, unfortunately. But basically you put that down onto your fabric. You'd iron that in place. I might just about be able to see the, the line as we go. Is that the so, back end of the cat? So which part is that? That's the, actually, it should have gone over that side, shouldn't it? Let me just put that over there, like so. This is a bit of an impromptu demo. I'll and then you've got the basically the cat piece there would overlap there. And that would be my pattern of my cat. And then you can't really see it too much. But basically, you just put that on there. You would then cut around the design of the cat, which I can't really see because it's face down. But getting your fabric scissors, you'd follow it round. Um, and then basically cut out your design mm -hmm. and then that will actually fuse onto my fabric. So what I might do is cut that out because we are coming towards the end of the hour. I'll cut that out and I'll have it ready for us at four o'clock to Perfect. put onto the tote bag. Lovely. Um, if you've got your one day special, I mean, now's your chance. Now you've seen the hour.